Welcome to class. My name is Sandra Batakis and I'll be the instructor to take you through this course. In my background, I've been working within the training and the IT field for the last 25 years. In that experience, I've had a chance to not only learn all Microsoft products, but I've learned them since version one and even before then to look at them in beta. So having used everything from Microsoft Word 1.0, Excel and PowerPoint version one, straight up through versions 2016 with the complement of Microsoft Office, I'm here to tell you that they've come a really, really long way. So based on that, we're going to take a whole lot of practical experience as well as what is there under the hood and we'll have a great course together. Once you sign into Office 365, you're going to be presented with a web page and at the very top left, you're going to have a tile that you can click on and as soon as you click on it, you're going to get a list of applications that are going to be available to you. Now, with these applications, they all become part of Office 365. You're going to see that we have a place for mail, we have our calendar, we have people, we usually call these contacts or an address book. Yammer is really about social media. We have a news feed, which is an extension of such. OneDrive, which is a portal up in the cloud to store your documents. We have SharePoint sites we'll take a look at. We have planner apps, Microsoft Project, which actually is, in fact, a separate license. We have Dynamics CRM, again, a separate license. Our tasks, which are similar to the tasks you see in Outlook if you use Outlook. Power BI. Power BI is all about crunching numbers, pulling data out and doing some serious reporting. We have social engagement apps. Delve is a great one where we get a chance to click and see how we're collaborating with other people. We've got video. Think of that as the YouTube of Office 365 or the YouTube that's corporate wide, meaning anyone who's on that platform can use it. Security and compliance. Sway if you want some quick online presentations. Guess what? Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and OneNote. Of course, our administrative menu. And if you want to spend some more money, we get to go up to the Microsoft Store. Now, I go through those super, super quick just to show that there really are a lot of applications available to you. Some of them are actually going to be under a different license. So that's the part I really like to point out. We do have different licensing models. There are basic licenses, and please do not quote me as to what they're called because Microsoft likes to change them all of the time. But in an example, you might be someone who's paying $4 a month for webmail only. And when I say webmail only, they really still do give you OneDrive and you can view SharePoint, maybe not participate. So they kind of give you a little of this and a little bit of that. You get contacts and calendar and tasks. Um, we can also do one that's a more full license which also gives you an installable version of Microsoft Office. And what I mean by that is instead of using these, their online versions, you can actually install the software and get the full suite of Microsoft Office Professional installed on your local computer. Now, an example, if you were to do that, you actually have a license to install it on up to five computers. So for me, I have an Office PC, a home PC, I've got a giant Dell Precision laptop that I use when I'm um, remote. And of course, I have a Surface Pro. So that's something I get to carry if it's just a quick meeting. So on all four of those machines, I've actually installed Microsoft Office because they're all mine and they're all under that same licensing model. So if I decide that I need yet one more device, guess what? I still have a license to use it. So those are some examples and you could pay anywhere from four dollars a month to let's say 25 dollars a month because it's a whole a la carte you want this and not that type of choice if you want some information on what's going to be in each subscription then you do want to go to office365.com and follow the leads for products and you'll get a good grid that'll tell you what their pricing structures and licensing models are but with that as well if you even have the most basic, you need to look at Office as a big collection of tools and services. Even though you've got ones that you can pick and choose, you're always going to get the same core, which means some of the online apps, your email services, SharePoint, and an ability to use OneDrive. Now, Office can be accessed 
by a web browser in any mobile device. So if I'm sitting at a laptop or a PC, and actually I've got two machines logged on right now, um, I've opened up a browser and I've gone to 365.com and I've had a chance to log in. Now, I also have it on my mobile phone, but I have an Apple iPhone. So if you have a Windows phone, you get one set of tools. If you have an iPhone, you get a different set of tools. We'll talk about that later in the course. But the bottom line is I can still access all of the content on that mobile device. And the whole point of 365 is really about productivity. Productivity for you personally, productivity for you as a collaborative team with other team members. Again, I worked on a document and I walked away early this morning. It was saved up in OneDrive. If I had wanted to, I could open it up on my phone, but I uh, got to my destination, was able to log in and pull down the content to continue working on it. So all about being able to pick up where you left off regardless of where you physically are. Operating system requirements are actually quite plentiful. And what I mean by that is if you could go out onto a web browser, you can probably run it as long as it's a pretty recent operating system. So I would not try this on, let's say, a Windows XP machine because on Windows XP, you've got a browser. The browser may not be up to date. It may not have the requirements to actually run Office 365. I'm here to tell you that I've actually installed a browser on a Windows XP machine and been able to get my email. So when I say that, you know, it's pretty pretty general, if it goes out under the web, you can use it, um, I really mean it. But what I will also tell you is there are certain features that simply won't work unless it's an up-to-date browser. And the up-to-date browsers, known as Internet Explorer, Microsoft Edge, they're not gonna run on a super old machine. So the operating system isn't as important but if you are going to install the Microsoft Office suite on that current machine, then yes, you do need Windows 8 or greater. Once again, I've got plenty of Windows 7 machines as long as they have Win uh, Service Pack 1 that run everything beautifully. But their focus here is really to get you on 10. Now, there's little tidbits that will work here but not there. Um, Windows 10 really brings everything together. So if I was to use this, can I run Microsoft Office? Yes. Can I go to office365.com? The answer is yes. But some of the integration from a local version of Word to the version up on the web or to be able to open up a Word document on the web page and then say edit it locally on the local machine to the fully installed version of Word. Does that work beautifully? Um, with Windows 7, not so much. So really you're going to get all the features by going here. It's going to work much better. There won't be a lot of hiccups. Um, Mac OS, we got 10.5, 10.6, 10.7, 10.8, 9, and 10. You can run this on Windows Server 2008, it must be R2. And web browsers, we have Internet Explorer, Safari, Google, Mozilla, we also have Microsoft Edge that's out. And of course, it'll work just fine with Office 2013, 2010, uh, 2011 if you're on a Mac, and of course the most recent 2016. But I will also say here, there might be a second installation. If it's not working sometimes, if you're running, let's say, Windows 7 and Microsoft Office 2010, um, and you're trying to use some features, it may not work as well, but there's a little fix that you can download from the Office 365 webpage that'll kind of fix all of the different issues that you might have. Once you log on to the portal, you're going to see here You've got your app launcher. It looks like a, a, an icon with a set of tiles on it. When you click, it's going to drop down and then have all of your apps available. Um, I can tell you that this gets upgraded all of the time. As a matter of fact, from the time I was asked to film this course to the time I started the PowerPoints, which was all of a couple of weeks, it had gone through an upgrade. I logged in and all of the screenshots had already changed. All the looks and feels and tweaks had all been updated. Not so much you can't figure it out. It's not so different that it's going to floor anyone or have you not be able to find what you're looking for. But just to say that 
if you're taking this course and you click and it looks a little different than mine, don't pay attention to it. They do it all the time, but all of the right icons are still going to be there, name the same thing and doing the same thing. You have a notification area here that's going to warn you of things going on. Your settings menu looks like a gear and we'll have a chance to browse that. And at any time, if you need help, there is a help center. Your current user login is going to be right here. Now, what's interesting about the current user is, of course, if you upload your picture, this is going to be you. And also, we have another area. I just erased the ink so I could clearly show you where it is. That little area there where you see a light blue line, that is actually what we call presence information. As you start to use it, you're going to see that if you're available, it might be green. And if your calendar says that you're in a meeting, it's actually going to turn red and say that you're not available. We're going to go through presence information, but for now, whenever you're logged in, I'd like you to look there and see how it changes color because each color actually does represent something. Your content window, this right here will give you some quick links. One of the first things people like to do with a new version is to actually install Microsoft Office on the local PC. So you're going to have some things right there. And of course, it's going to showcase to you different items that you can log into and use. Microsoft SharePoint Online allows you to gain access to so many different, I'll call them websites. And I have to say that very carefully because they are technically a website. You're looking at them over the web, but we also tend to call them very specifically SharePoint sites. It's a technology that drives them. You have the My Site app, which is your personal website. You've got team sites. Now, a team site is something that you and anyone else in your organization could collaborate on, and you can create a lot of team sites. You can have intranet sites, maybe departmental accounting is going to have one, purchasing will have another, maybe of training and IT who have their own intranet sites. And you also have extranet sites if you're trying to share information with customers. You can even use SharePoint to use a public website. In fact, for a great period of time, my website was done in SharePoint. Now, all of these different sites actually use the same model. And what I love about SharePoint is it takes building a website down to what I call the Microsoft Word level. You're adding different elements in. Yes, of course, it's going to have a little bit of training, but elements are added in little modules. So here I want a task list and you insert a task list. Over here, I want a place to write a memo. Over here, I'd like a picture library or a document library. So you can actually compose a web page by putting in different sections, and each one of those sections are apps that you just insert onto the page. So we're not doing a lot of SharePoint development in this course, but you'll get a very quick overview of how easy it is to create a SharePoint page. And if it's something you think you're going to use, then uh, I would recommend taking another SharePoint class and really learning all the neat things that are under there. Come on.